So the so the Camargue is, is a delta of the Rhone River, and it it extends uh, over some uh, 1,500 uh, square kilometers, and it is the second largest delta in in the Mediterranean uh, basin, with the, with the Po Delta in in Italy. Uh, the uh, the river Rhone is uh, more than 800 kilometers long, rising in Switzerland, and its catchment area extends over 96,000 square kilometers. And it is a very transformed river. Since the middle of the 19th century, the, the Rhone River has been dramatically transformed. Today, the load of coarse sediment in the river has been strongly reduced through complete embankment and channelization. Gravel extraction, which reached uh, 300,000 uh, cubic meters in the last 30 years, and the construction of more than 120 reservoirs in the Northern Alp catchments, and uh, about 18 run of the river hydropower plants along the, the Rhone itself. So it's, it's a really artificial uh, river with, uh, with strong results, which is an, an increase of the flood risk by a total disconnection of the river from its uh, floodplain and a dramatic reduction of the, of the load of sediment. And we know that there are less than 20% remaining suspended uh, solids uh, of uh, small size, uh, but the, we don't know the proportion of loss on the most coarse sediment, but it is probably much, much worse. Um, the, the reduction of sediment load is enhanced by climate change and reforestation in the mountain areas, which, which reduce very much the the, uh, the, the, the source of, of sediment. The construction of the Delta, uh, it has been constructed of, over the last 10,000 years. You see on, on these uh, figures, the different coastline over the, over the years. And uh, you see that the, the, the sediment is deposited in, in large lobes, deltaic lobes, and the sediment are uh, taken and redistributed by the uh, local current, the Ligurian uh, current. Um, and uh, the, there was great uh, progression of the Delta in, in the last uh, centuries in this uh, uh, Eastern part of the, of the Delta. The Delta is, uh, is less artificialized than the Ebro Delta, but with large natural areas in the South of the Delta, but still it is completely embanked and does not receive any more significant amount of, of sediment. It is completely embankment, embanked for more than a century, for more than 150 years. It is polarized in most of, these, uh, of its areas, and it receives about 400 million cubic meters pumped from, from the river for uh, mainly for agriculture. And it has very weak exchange with the sea at the, at the west of the delta. The, the delta is very uh, sensitive, is highly vulnerable to, uh, to sea level rise, uh, with uh, about 70% uh, of this uh, surface area, which is below one meter uh, above sea level. Um, which is uh, one meter is about the the mean level of the uh, of the seawater during uh, during depression during uh, during storms. Um, the the coastline is highly uh, mobile. You see in white here the areas which are in erosion, and this there is some accretion on limited limited areas of the of the delta. The mean ret retreat is about four meters per year, but very heterogeneous in, in space. So you see the, the altitudinal map, uh, topographic map of the delta. So one meter is, is uh, uh, above, uh, below one meter is the, is the, the, green, the green color here. Uh, the subsidence is estimated to less than uh, one millimeter per year, but we have very 
poor data on on on, on subsidence. There is uh, no sediment input uh, in, anymore, and the sea level rise it has been it has been shown before is is now above four four millimeters per per year uh, in the in the recent uh, in the recent years. It is highly sensitive to extreme climatic uh, event uh, because uh, uh, because of this uh, low coastline and uh, and uh, co and coastal erosion, which uh, with uh, the, the sea which is uh, deep at the at the edge of the delta. One of the problem we are facing is that there is strong denial by the local population of the change which are underway. And the uh, and the representative are following uh, are following the well the wish of the local population that sea level rise and coastal erosion does not exist, which is uh, which is not an easy situation to to find uh, solutions. So. What we are doing with uh, with partners is to restore 6,500 hectares of wetland, which were former salinas. This is uh, the red area here, and we. We, we have several objectives for this uh, restoration project. The, the, the first is to buffer against a sea surge, cre creating an area where the, uh, the waves will, will decrease their energy and high. We want to restore connection between the lagoon system, the Vagares lagoon system and the sea and to restore biodiversity. This area was completely embanked when it was sold to the Conservatoire du Littoral but the, uh, the dike collapsed a few weeks after being sold to the Conservatoire de, du Littoral. And we have, of course, a, a scientific monitoring of the, uh, of the processes in this area, and we implement adaptive management to, to promote all these uh, objectives. This is a view of the site which is uh, currently uh, being uh, restored before, uh, before the, the dike disappears. You see this. Uh, this dirt road in white here it is uh, the the location of, of the of the dike. So, as a conclusion, uh, I would say that the, the this former salina has become a buffer zone and constitute a nature based solution to uh, to sea level rise. A new beach is under construction by natural processes instead of the previous dikes, and the sea was digging at the at the foot of the dike. Which, uh, which is responsible for the collapse of this dike. And, and we need to demonstrate now the multiple values of this wetland, including the efficiency to reduce wave high and energy and to convince local people and the, uh, and the decision makers that this is a sound solution to, to face uh, sea level rise and, uh, and, uh, and climate change. Thank you very much.